In this updated tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to edit the audio tracks right on the timeline using the mouse. Now, there are many occasions where you want to use a more sophisticated approach. If you have an earlier version of PowerDirector, you might be using the Wave Editor, or with 17, you might use the Audio Editor, or if you have the add-on program Audio Director, that might be your tool of choice. But there are many occasions when you have something on the screen and you want to make some quick changes, and it's very easy to do with the mouse on the timeline. I have a movie here, and it starts out with a still frame and a lower third, and then it transitions into a parade. But we have an issue with the audio, so listen, and you'll hear quite quickly what that is. Now the transition here was rather abrupt. It's not what we want. I'd like to fade it out of the lower track music and into the sound of the band and the parade. I can do that very easily by simply using the mouse and setting some audio keyframes. Now there's a big difference in version 15 and under and version 16 and 17 and how you set these. So we'll make that clear in a moment. But what I'm going to do is just take the mouse and hover it below track one and use the left mouse button and drag down and I'll widen it so I can see a little bit better and also for my audio track number two. In order to set a keyframe in version 15 and under, you simply highlight the track with the audio and then you move your cursor down to the line and when it's a hand you will see a little red dot that you can apply and when you click on it you're setting an audio keyframe at that point in your project. Now in version 16 and 17 it doesn't work that way. You have to also hold down the control key and now when I hold the control key down in version 17 I see the little blue square it tells me what the decibel level is. It's set to neutral, 0, 0.0. And then I hold the left mouse button down and click, and I just added an audio keyframe. And I can repeat this process and add as many as I want, as often as I want in my project. And then when I want to change the decibel level at that keyframe, I can drag it up or down, hold the left mouse button, move it up, or move it down. And here, for example, I can have a shallow motion downward. It will soften the sound. And then I can move one here, and then it will soften it up. Or I can move these two closer together. These are like beads on a bracelet, and I can make the change rather abrupt as opposed to rather gradual. And so you have all this control over where the keyframe is, sliding it like a bead on a bracelet left or right, or up or down, to increase the decibel level or decrease it uh, to infinite zero. Now, if you want to remove a keyframe, just hover the mouse over the keyframe, then drag outside of the highlighted area. If I move down, it will change to a square looking like a garbage can. I let go and it removed the keyframe. Or I can do the same thing to the one right here and I can drag up. Right now I'm on the actually the video track. I could go higher if I wanted to. But just so long as I'm out of the audio track and let go and it took out that keyframe. So it's a very easy way to move keyframe, keyframes up or down or to remove them at all. In this case, I didn't hold on long enough, so I'll drag up higher, and now I remove that keyframe. There's another thing that you can do with the mouse, and, and that's when you see the double-headed arrow. You can take that, and that will increase or decrease the ent entire track. Now, what would happen if I have keyframes at a different location? So here, I have it way up, and the yellow is clipping, which you don't want. But what happens if I move it here? Well, it keeps the shape of your keyframes. So if you move some up and down and want to increase or decrease the entire track, 
you can do that up to the limit of where your keyframes are by simply hovering it over the line itself when you get the double headed arrows. So those are the various ways you can change that. Now if I right click on this, I also have another option which says restore to original volume level. So if I've really changed this in ways I don't want, that turns it back to normal. So for the sake of this simple project, all I'm going to do is move in a little bit into my into my upper audio track, hold the control key down because I'm in version 17 and set a keyframe here and then we'll gradually, I'll lower the first one, we'll gradually ease into the parade music. At the same time, I, I also could probably truncate the, the lower clip, but I'm not going to do that in this exercise. Uh, I will set a keyframe on the lower track when I highlight it. Uh, I'll set one here, and about the same time we will lower the audio. Now you notice if I don't set another keyframe to the right, uh, it will actually move itself back up to normal. So until I cut the clip, I'm just going to move that down again so that will be silent. Let's listen to the difference that this will make by simply moving some keyframes onto our tracks uh, with the mouse. So it just made it a little easier to handle the transition between one sound and the other. And I think I probably would take the, uh, if I were to do this a little more carefully, I would probably make it even more gradual, slide into the audio of the, of the uh, parade sounds. I think that would sound a little better. <laughs> So you can adjust these very quickly and very easily and visually by adjusting audio on your tracks in CyberLink PowerDirector.